Eh, revolution. Let's talk about his sampling methods. Uh, in the introduction of the book, the author says that it's in the, uh, indispensable tending to use this, to obtain additional information or fill in models. Uh, in this chapter, we talk about cross-validation and bootstrap. Basically, uh, we can use the cross-validation methods to, obtain, to estimate the test error for a specific model. So evaluate the model performance or model assignment, just to have a little bit of vocabulary related to this topic. But we can estimate this just for one model or for many models, several models, or different level of flexibility. So we can select the best model, uh, the best level of flexibility, the best model to use for a specific data. The bootstrap is a thing that we use to, to estimate the uncertainty related to, to a model. By estimating the standard error of the problem, it, it's really useful because it doesn't rely on their any assumptions, statistical assumptions of normality or any distribution. So it's a very powerful way to avoid the problems that we saw in the linear regression uh, limitation that we saw in chapter uh, three, yeah, linear regression. So let's start with cross validation. And the chapter starts explaining the problem with the training error. And most of the time, the training error is too optim optimistic about the, the performance of the model. And so we really need to take, about, uh, to take care about the, the, the test error rate. Uh, there are several ways to estimate the test error rate, but in this chart, we're just going to hold out a subset of the training observations. Uh, from the filling process. So instead of filling the model using all the data, we're going to take out uh, some of the data in order to make the estimation. So the first method is the validation approach. In this case, we split randomly the data set and we use one half to train the model and one other half just to to estimate the test error rate. So as this process happens randomly, depending on the seed that we that we set on R, in R, we can have different values of estimation at different level of flexibility. For example, uh, the book shows this chart and basically is, is using the auto data set and is so it's mesh per gallon predicted in the predictor is the house power the house power but we can see different but every every line is at a different c so the values differ between each other but the result is basically is basically the same when we add one level of flexibility so we elevate the level of the equation. Uh, we have a really big decrease on the error rate of the model. Uh, but as we continue adding more flexibility to the model, we don't have any extra value. So the main characteristics of this, of this method is that the accuracy estimated the test error is low. So the, even though the conclusion is good, we cannot have a good understanding of how much is the error that we expect in our predictions. Time efficiency is really high. So we expect it's not time consuming to, to use this method. Uh, the bias mitigation. So the proportion of data used to train the model is low. So it's not maybe the best model to use to estimate the, the, the test error. Uh, to make this possible, we are going to use a little bit of tidy models and data table. So 
we start defining the, the model that we want to use. In, in this case, a linear regression. We define the scene and we split the data using the proportion of 0 0.5. And we get the training and the test and the, and the testing data set. Then we feed many linear models. So we, we are going to fit depending on the degree of the equation. So we have merge per gallon, depending on house power, but we are going to add the, use the, the poly function to, to increase the degree of freedom that we have of house power. So if the equation was linear first, then you will have, when you go to two, to the second level, third level equation, and to the 10th level equation of uh, mesh per gallon versus house power. Now we have the, our recipe and we already have our model. We add both together inside of our workflow. We use the training data to fit the model. And we also get the predictions and estimate the standard error using the true value versus the predicted values. And then just to select the, the color that we want to see. And we can see that at the beginning when we just have one degree of flexibility, we have on average, the, our prediction would be differ, would be different to the mesh per gallon, original mesh per gallon in Fine units, but the the error reduced to four point three. And when we go down, we see that the difference is not huge, so we don't we don't see any tree. So it's the same thing that we were watching here. The second way to estimate the test error is the leave one out cross validation. In this case, we are going to, to fit one mother per row in our data set. So we will take one observation out of the mother, and then we're going to train the model with all the rest of the data. This method is really useful when you have a, a, a little bit of data. So you don't have too much data to split into parts as we saw in the validation approach. After getting all the errors for each row, we get the average and that would be our test error rate for this estimation. We see this chart, how it looks. It looks just like the before, but just having a value, no, it doesn't depend so it doesn't use any random process. We don't need to set any, any C. So the main characteristic of this process is the occurrence estimation is high. The time efficiency is low. It takes too much time to feed one model per row. A proportion of data used to, to train the model is high, so our bias is low. Our error related to bias is low, but our estimate variance is high. Just imagine that uh, every observations will have a really different values. So it's like the, the dispersion of the answers is high. And that's something bad. So, um, Tidy model doesn't, doesn't really use this model too much, this method. So I needed to create uh, my own function to use them and using also the tools that we have in our sample data set, our sample package. So we start, uh, yeah, we don't need the scene. That, that's something that I could change later. So we use this function, leave one out, cross-validation using the auto data set. We create a split, 
and then we set us at the table. As we want to, to perform this method for many formulas, so we want 10 levels of flexibilities, flexibility to evaluate, we use an apply function using a custom function that is this one. So how it works? First, I take the formula and extract the predictor. So we also have always have the predictor here and then I space. So what I do here is using a regular expression to remove everything that goes after the space. So at the end, it just, we just have the mens per gallon word. But it's a more general way to do it. And then we take this formula that are characters, uh, we convert it to formula so that we can use to fit our model. Uh, as we have a uh, error split object, we need to use the training function to extract the all the training data by ID, and then train a linear a linear model for every example. Then we join using a right join the testing data, and also making the prediction using each model and calculate the square, the square median, and the root median square error. And then we convert to the table and maybe you just select some column. And that's basically what we do to perform the analysis each time. And, and now we can see a really a similar story the same. A huge difference between the first level and the second level, and then going after that, we don't see a really big difference. So yeah, the this method also works for this data set. Uh, the key for cross validation is the the method that the authors recommend the most because it's really accurate and it's also less expensive than the leave one out cross validation. So in this case, uh, instead of making a linear regression or any model per row, we just need to select how many groups. We, we need to divide the data in some groups. So we use one group to perform our test set. So we're going to use, for example, this, this part of our test set and the other part to train the model. And then we change and we change into, we validate in every group. So at the end, the test error rate would be the average of all the groups that we already defined. In this case, we can see that the variability of our estimation is really, are really close one to each other. So yeah, we have less variance in our prediction. So to, to summarize, yeah, the estimate, estimating the test error, the accuracy is high. The time efficiency, let's say that is regular because it's a little bit slower than using the validation approach, but it's much faster than making the leave one out approach. The proportion of data used to, uh, to make the model, let's say it's regular because depending on how many faults you use, you will, you will use, for example, 90% of the data. You, for example, you, 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 you say that your case is 10, and the, the estimation variance is regular because also uh, below the leave one out validation method. And the book recommends to use always five or 10 groups for this validation. And the process is a little bit simpler as study models already include this, this validation, we can use the tomb package uh, to perform this analysis or in all cases. So we can see our recipe and also we can tune the degree. That's what we want to know. 
Then we create a workflow, uh, add our recipe, add our model. We use the, the B fold CV to create the folds or the groups using the auto data set, using them. And then we, we define the flexibility in the grid part, the tone grid, just to make in the estimating the best performance. He, uh, after running all this, we can plot this using auto plot, and we can see the same story of the median square error. It goes from this number and it stays, uh, I would say, almost constant. So that they doesn't make sense to, to make higher the level of flexibility. Uh, also, the book makes a comparison between the leave one out cross validation and the tenfold cross validation. And we can see that the truth is error is the blue line. That's the real line because this is a simulated data set in this case. And the leave one out is the black one and the tenfold cross validation is the orange one. So we can see that the, the leave one out and the tenfold cross validation, the lines to estimate the, our test error are almost the same and they make almost the same estimation. So for that reason, both methods are really good to estimate the test error. Bootstrap is a really useful technique. And the book doesn't make too much emphasis in how good it is to, to make inference. So for example, when we were using linear models, we saw a p-value, but that p-value depends on many assumptions. If you want to know if your predictor is really significant, independent, independent if it have a normal distribution, and make all the assumptions that the model have, the, this technique is the one that you need to use. In this case, for example, you have this data set that just have three rows. We sam resample this, but with replacement. That's the, the keyword. So for example, we have one, two, three. We could have three, one, and three again. We here with two, three, one. Yeah. For example, this one was the same to this, the whole data set. And this one, for example, you repeat the row two, the row two, and the row one. Uh, this technique is great to estimate the, the standard error, our interval, but it doesn't affect the center. For example, if you take, a, this is the sampling distribution, uh, the, the, the yellow one is the sample distribution. That happens when you go to the population directly and take one sample, and other sample, and other sample, and other sample. Uh, that's a really good, that's really expensive. So most of the time we don't have the possibility to make many samples uh, from our population. We just take a, a really big good, a really big sample, and then we apply bootstrap validation, uh, bootstrap to estimate the, the our, uh, intervals, our intervals. So in this case, we, we have the bootstrap function. In this time, I, I'm making 500 examples and we may, and we fit and tidy. So we extract the coefficients of the, of the linear regression. So we mutate, map the function, get the coefficients, and then get the summary. For example, for this intercept, the lower value is 38.5, and the higher value is 41.5. So yeah, it's significant because it doesn't cross from zero. And the host power, goes between this negative number to this other negative number. So yeah, it doesn't close from zero. So it's also significant. 
I'm using the quartile function for the 95, 95 level, 95% confident level. But in this, in this case, uh, we don't are making any assumption about the distribution. So it doesn't matter, it's normal, it's not normal. We can get a really good estimation of the, the intervals of any kind of value using the bootstrap technique. For example, we can see here that the center of the distribution is in 0 0.6, but the center of the distribution from the Bruce distribution is not 0 0.6. So we don't need to take in account the center. We, just, we take the center for our original sample, and we just take the interval from the Bruce booster. And that's why I don't know if you have any doubt or you have any question about this. Uh, no, I don't really have questions. I was very clearly explained, thank you. Um, do you always make uh, such uh, like fancy notes for the books you read? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have been, yeah, I, I have been working on this. So we have a sample of my notes. It was originally on GitHub, but in those weeks I have been working on making this a book. So you can add saying it's freely available and you can have my notes, uh, about classification problem, the linear regression, uh, possible problems that are the limitations. Yeah, of course you can come in and also the my exercise. So as we go in the book, I'm trying to to complete most of the exercises and share them here. Then yeah, when I made the resampling, I will also be included here. And so do you have the, the GitHub link for that page yeah so it's on the chat uh. yeah you can oh okay this is the book right and you want the repo uh, no, it's not this one. Uh, so. yeah so that's good This one. So this is the the repo. But I think that that's important. You also you want to make any contribution using a mistake. You can make a, a pull request, and then I can check. It. But it also have the link to the to the page where you can see the book right here. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, well, I don't have any questions right now. Uh, for example, for the next meeting, we will be covering the exercises, but uh, there is no one signed up. Uh, do you want to do exercises for this chapter? Uh, yeah, yeah, I will do it. Okay. So... I'll be writing in, the, in our notes. Okay. And yeah. is there anything else you want to add or do we just close the meeting? Okay. Well, bye-bye. <laughs> okay, bye. See you next week. See you next week.